So why do we make holsters this particular way? And why does it matter? If you're buying a holster, what do you care? Just get a good holster. It doesn't matter about the manufacturing procedure, but I think that it does. T-Rex Arms is 10 years old. This year, we're celebrating this anniversary. And even though we do a bunch of stuff now, the only thing we've done for 10 whole years is Kydex holsters. And we've learned a lot of lessons there. This is where we've had 10 years of customer interaction. This is where we've had 10 years of manufacturing experience. This is where we've had 10 years of developing those core values that we care about here at T-Rex. And so knowing how we make holsters sheds a lot of light on why we make holsters and why we do other stuff at T-Rex that matters to us. Why is it that we want to focus on equipment for people that allows them to carry other life-saving equipment so that they can take care of themselves and take care of others? Uh, I think that the 10 years of experience we have doing that sheds a lot of light on there. So at the very beginning, when we started making Kydex holsters, uh, it looked a little bit different than this. Everything was much simpler, much cruder, and everything was bought off of the shelf. We bought bandsaws, toaster presses, we bought foam, we bought everything just, uh, even the blue guns here, we bought off of the rack and then just, you know, taped popsicle sticks to them. That is how we got the shapes of our original Kydex holsters 10 years ago. And things have changed a little bit since then. We now make a much more sophisticated vacuum forming mold system and we make a lot of them. As Isaac has mentioned, mold development has come a long way in the last 10 years. And one of those biggest improvements for us has been actually redoing the mold development process. Now, we used to use these blue guns, as I already mentioned, but the biggest issue with them was threefold. We had cycle time, wrapping the material around this, you grab it out of the heat press, you'd wrap it around there and putting it inside the press. It took a long time. It was also kind of inconsistent. Wrapping around there um, was all about how your pressure was, would, would uh, affect the final product. Just not ideal. Um, another problem we ran into was just repeatability. It was almost an art to actually make these things every time. The glue, the popsicle sticks, the tape, uh, it was just not very repeatable anytime you needed to scale. And then the third one was just final product. Um, the final product, obviously, because these blue guns are just not very accurate, was just not very good. Uh, we would have to constantly change them around and improve them over time, and it just wasn't ideal. Um, so we went back to the drawing board on it. We realized to really meet your guys' needs the way we wanted to do and drew, drop the lead time as much as we could, we needed a better system that had faster cycle times that could improve the quality for you guys and was also super repeatable. Um, so we, with that, we went to a new system. And the new system uses a few new things. One of the big ones that gave us a huge improvement was going to scans and in everything in CAD. So now we are able to get scans or CAD files from the manufacturers and input them into Fusion. We do all of our CAM and CAD in there. We're able to build our blocking, export it, and the whole process is super repeatable, super fast, and gets us really good quality. We're able to achieve plus or minus five thousandths on these molds. So why should you as a customer care about plus or minus five thousandths or how fast we're able to make molds? Well, it all comes down to what we can offer you. So we're able to streamline the whole process so much that we're able to offer lower volume stuff and still deliver a good high quality product to the customer. So in addition to improving the molds and the 3D files for our products, we also need to improve the tooling that we use for those products. The biggest one is thermoforming. 
So at the very beginning of the process, we heat up the Kydex and we pull it down to that mold and the quality of that holster is going to be dependent on our quality of thermoforming. So we've been using these heat presses here for a long time and they've been good for the job, but there's still some variance. There's some um, wide tolerances that we've had to deal with with the product and with the heat that these give off. So part of our job in engineering is to improve on that tool and make it more consistent and deliver a better product. And that is this machine right here, which is a prototype of a new heat press that is completely T-Rex designed, built, and will be assembled when we get to the final version of it. Now this tool brings a lot of improved features to the previous design, but the main one is that the Kydex is heated consistently throughout the sheet material. And the reason this is so important is that there can be no stresses, no areas of low definition that land on that finished product. Consistency is extremely important for this process. Now the cutting and the drilling is the other place where consistency is really important. Back in the old days, it was all done by hand on saws and drill presses. And we've had a bunch of iterations of CNC routers. Over here, we have some of our original experimental molds with the magnetic hold down. By the way, don't do magnetic hold down. Uh, and over time, we've developed more and more precision and more and more repeatability on the process. So as we've developed these shot bots out, we've given them better tooling that is capable of even greater precision and greater speed. But even these machines are older generations of technology than what we do now. The Haas machines allow us to cut even faster and even more precise, and we can make all of our things inside of them. But one of the biggest developments we've had over the years are barcode scanners, so that of the thousands upon thousands of cut paths that we have for different holster lengths and sizes, uh, all you gotta do is scan the barcode and you get the exact cut, and you get really repeatable holes and the exact cut path that you need. And the edges, uh, they're pretty nice, but they still need a little bit of buffing just around the edges. And then once the edges get cleaned up on those uh, sizzle wheels, everything goes on to these conveyor belts. And the conveyor belts are another thing that looks small and simple and basic, and everybody knows what conveyor belts do, but Conveyor belts have drastically changed the way that we work at T-Rex and drastically changed the speed. 10 years ago, holsters took weeks to go from order to delivery, and now it is days. And we've added a bunch of improvements to the conveyor belts, like those green lights down there. This system is built for maximum capacity during Black Friday. We are gonna be set up for this conveyor belt to be loaded with holsters, with mag carriers, and at a glance, everybody can see the green, yellow, or red lights showing which stations need attention so that things continue to move quickly and lead time continues to be days. With our new bin system, we get a lot of efficiency out of this. It's just changed the game for us a lot. Our old system used these blue guns like we mentioned multiple times. So we almost needed as many blue guns as we did molds to wrap this around and center. It's created a lot, again, cost. You have to make more of these complicated parts to do every single gun. It's just inefficient. So now we use these bend plates with locator pins. This allows us to do geometry that we were, was previously impossible, but also allows us to be super flexible. Each station here doesn't need to have one of each mold that we've ever made. It just needs to have a bend plate for each type that we can make. So now we can just put it in, and let it cool, and the aluminum just draws the heat out of the plastic super efficiently, a lot quicker than just air does. So again, giving us faster cycle times and just overall a much better system. When we designed the Sidecar 2.0, which is a brand new product with a brand new design, we needed a tool to make the notches on the teeth that fit the attachment to the holster body. Now with this, we had to keep in mind that every Sidecar that we made, past, present, and future must fit together. In order to do that, we had to keep those tolerances really, really small down to a single thousand. So once this machine goes through and cuts all those notches, these two pieces must fit together every single time. And we have the, the QC systems to check and make sure that they're up to par. A few thousands off and the pieces would not fit together. A few thousands too small and they would be loose when it was fit together. 
And this holster station here is where things have actually changed the least. Yes, there is some new technology like this pneumatic pin pusher, which is awesome. We've uh, injection molded more of our own parts and dialed in the actual hardware, the posts and screws uh, a little bit more, but it's still all being done by hand. All the holsters are being assembled and hardware by hand so that this can be done properly. And it's the final quality control check to make sure the customer gets the right uh, weapon, the right light, the right color, right or left hand. And very careful fit testing with the actual guns that uh, the customer have ordered holsters for so that it does work for them right out of the box. There is a good fit and good retention on the weapon and on the magazine. And we also wanna make sure that any accessories that the customer has ordered, like for the Ragnarok QLS system and UBL and thigh strap are all attached and ready to go so that it is ready for the customer to use right out of the box. Uh, this has been something we have done uh, as long as we've been doing holsters and it's something that we really want to continue doing, even as we continue to add more stuff, more accessories, more support equipment, more lights, uh, more things that go along with this general mission, even if they're not directly attached to holsters. And over the course of 10 years, we have added a lot of extra support products, everything from pistol magazines, rifle magazines, to night vision and helmets and mounts and body armor. We have a bunch of different kinds of body armor. We've designed a lot of nylon products to go with that body armor, plate carriers, chest rigs, slings, belts, all kinds of stuff. But a lot of that has come from our work designing holsters. Holsters have really taught us everything that we know about product design, customer support, logistics, manufacture, uh, everything. And that's not the only reason they matter. Yes, they have helped us to grow as a company in our understanding and our knowledge and our ability to do stuff. But holsters also help our customers to grow and take on more responsibility as well. A holster is like a business card for freedom. It's something that lets you go from being a gun owner to a gun carrier. It forces you to think about how to become that serious citizen, how to use those kinds of life-saving tools to protect yourself and protect other people. That's why we care about holsters so much. And they also let us do a bunch of other stuff that we're excited about for the future. They have taught us a lot about manufacturing and automation and logistics. We're able to grow our team by hiring people with great skill sets and to offer some jobs. And we discover some really important aspects of American manufacturing that have kind of been lost and experiment with new stuff like that 3D printing and that 3D scanning. And so over the next 10 years, I am not really sure what will happen, but I'm very, very excited about the holsters because they continue to be a really important development thing.